Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So as we've seen the price of XRP move up to 65 cents, move back down all the way to 43 cents, now back up to 50 cents, at least as of the time of this recording, we can at least safely say that, uh, you know, XRP is not moving based on any kind of real world utility, at least not as of yet. Uh, we're hoping that is going to be the case, probably moving into 2025, once we see some regulatory clarity in the space. Retail investors though in cryptocurrency don't really understand this concept. Nick Crypto Crusader here commenting on this, once regulations hit this space, utility projects get the green light, in a massive way. We have to remember this. Utility projects like the HBARs and the XLMs, XDC, XRP, whatever it is, they haven't really been able to shine to their fullest potential, at least not yet. The digital rails are already in place. The problem is that they are not being utilized the way most perceive, at least not yet. Everyone in this space is always asking the same question when it comes to projects like HBAR and XRP, for example. That question is, with all these great announcements, why isn't the price moving? The simple answer, well, it's because a lot of these partnerships and a lot of these announcements require regulations before they really mean anything. You need to take a step back and analyze what this market is currently, which is a breeding ground of hype driven by speculation. Basically, guys, we are looking at uh, the clues, the hints to suggest where utility will go, to suggest where uh, XRP price will go. And that's OK. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're really not going to see anything until that real world utility does kick in. What we really want this space to be is a breeding ground of value driven by utility, which will happen eventually, he says. I don't know who needs to tell you this, but XRP, HBAR, XLM, XDC, all of these utility projects are not even close to being utilized at scale. Regardless of what you hear, institutions are still trying to navigate the regulatory uncertainty of this market. Yes, we are seeing names like BlackRock dipping their toes in, but they are not tokenizing trillions of dollars yet. With proper regulatory clarity, the floodgates are officially open, the light uh, officially turns green, and utility projects will race for the throne. Number one spot. A new king will be crowned and it won't, uh, definitely won't be Bitcoin or Ethereum, and most fail to accept that fact. You are either uh, sitting here and doing your homework on this space, or you will simply be left out. One of the things here that he says that I think is really interesting is that when the floodgates open, there will almost be like this race to the top. A lot of these cryptocurrency companies perform the same tasks, but it will be ultimately by the end of the day, at the end of the day, it will be companies that uh, really benefit their clients, their customers really have added value. These customers are going to be the happiest. Those companies will thrive. And, uh, you know, the benefit for us XRP holders is that Ripple is already in a position where, uh, you know, they're already making their customers happy. The ones that are using XRP in a real world use case, again, maybe not the billions, trillions of dollars in numbers, uh, in volume, but uh, even if they're making micro payments or smaller uh, smaller type payments, anything under ten thousand dollars, companies around the world are already commenting and they're already quite happy. So I think that bodes well for uh, Ripple's future and the future price of XRP. Here we have another one from XRP Drops. We are close. Ripple's Fiona Murray has emphasized this. I left Bangalore more confident than ever in our team's ability to drive the internet. A value, guys. She posted this, uh, I believe this is a LinkedIn post here. Last week, I had the pleasure of spending a few days in our India office. I loved hosting our APAC quarterly business review from Bangalore, and it was also great to shine a spotlight on the incredible work of our locally based compliance engineering team. Uh, it's so special to spend quality time with the team members across the APAC region. Here, uh, their views are uh, views on local opportunities and discuss our shared vision. Additionally, I was really inspired by the meeting with key players. I'm excited about the potential to partner amidst a large and vibrant web, uh, web three and fintech industry. I left Bangalore more confident than ever in our team's ability to drive the internet of value. Thanks to everyone who made this trip so productive and memorable. And she posted some photos there. So, you know, all around the world, again, all around the world, this is happening when it comes to Ripple. Ripple has, uh, I don't know, how many global head offices? How many head offices does Ripple have? I don't know. I've uh, I've never uh, even looked this looked this number up, but I think uh, I think I, I think it said fifteen. Uh, rebuilding the global financial system requires a globally diverse team with 15 offices around the world. You will find an inclusive and supportive environment ready to welcome you no matter where you are. So here are the offices, San Francisco, Sydney, Dubai, London, Reykjavik, uh, New York, Washington, D.C., Singapore, Sao Paulo, Mumbai. Uh, what else? London. Yeah, I think we said we said that already. 
Uh, anyway, guys, those are the offices that Ripple does currently have. And so is it of any surprise to you that Ripple has been knocking it out of the park around the world already? When we do see the regulatory clarity, it is just going to scale up quicker and I think more efficiently than uh, than most of these. Uh, I, I Dare I say than most of these other companies. I know I do like a lot of these projects, but Ripple, I think, has a head start in this game. Another great cryptocurrency project, though, in my opinion, is VeChain. Not really in direct competition with Ripple, but, uh, you know, a great project there. They're doing something interesting here. VeChain has partnered with the Crypto Carbon Ratings Institute, advancing sustainability and regulatory compliance. So uh, they've just made a strategic move to secure a crucial partnership with the Crypto Carbons Rating Institute, or the CCRI, to meet the European Union's crypto asset regulation, also referred to as Markets and Crypto Asset Regulation, or the MICA regulation, which uh, we've heard so much about over the last several months. According to the report published by VeChain, CCRI is one of the most influential European organizations that facilitates transparency around the environment impact, uh, the environmental impact of the crypto industry. So that is uh, big, especially for the WEF. It's a WEF talking point. Uh, crypto regulation, crypto is going to go hand in hand with environmentally friendly uh, targets. Because VeChain is already on this trajectory, I could also see them as being one of the more influential cryptocurrencies in the space moving forward. Of course, uh, they've done quite a bit in order to obtain these goals. Here's a quote we have and are continuing to engage with many businesses and industries to combine forces and create innovative solutions to promote sustainability in many different forms. Our ambition is to become one of the most sustainable blockchain networks and ecosystems. Uh, so... Guys, utility coins, certainly something uh, that we should be holding for the future. For more information on what cryptocurrencies I hold, which ones I'm going to be selling in this bull run, because that's the other thing. We don't want to squander this opportunity and think to ourselves, oh, you know, this coin is going to go to an exorbitant price, so I'm going to hold 100% of it. You can find all my picks, and eventually I'm going to be discussing more in depth which coins I'm going to be selling for pure profit, which ones uh, I'm going to be keeping. Some cryptocurrencies, obviously, I'm going to be keeping for the long term. All that is found at patreon.com slash working money channel. More Ripple partner news here, guys. This has to do with Airwallex. They have just bolstered direct lending in their Go Cardless partnership. The leading global payments and financial platform for modern business Airwallex has partnered with a company called Go Cardless to bolster its direct lending offering uh, with its Go Cardless partnership security. Airwallex can now offer direct debit lending to its customers across key several markets. By leveraging GoCardless Embed, a white labeled integration, Airwallex now connects to GoCardless's global bank payment network, helping Airwallex customers expand into new verticals and use cases where direct debit is preferred. So giving them a uh, another option there to, uh, to, to be able to pay using the GoCardless uh, white label integration. Airwallex has already launched its new integration in the UK with service due to roll out across Europe in the near future. The announcement is the latest from Airwallex as part of its commitment to support businesses of all sizes in achieving their global growth targets. Justin Leung, Financial Partnerships Manager at Airwallex, he says businesses of all sizes are looking at how they can adapt to evolving customer needs and payments with no exception. With direct debit continuing to be a trusted and popular way to pay, especially with the rise of the subscription economy, we felt it was the perfect time to strengthen our offering so that our customers can better serve theirs. By working with Go Cardless, we are able to quickly provide this option through one simple integration. And ultimately, that's what it's about. If you have the money, you should be able to transfer that quickly, seamlessly. And uh, I don't know if it's, um, you know, because of the way the economy is, if debit cards are becoming more popular. I know personally, I have always used my credit card, but that's, uh, I don't know, maybe more of an old school way of thinking. I know that, uh, you know, I get the most leverage there. Money doesn't come out of my account right away, but I don't know, maybe it's different for a different generation. Tell me down in the comments section if you guys use uh, debit credit what's your preferred method of payment currently i mean i would love it if i could attach my cryptocurrency to my credit card uh i that is not a, i don't i do not have that availability in my jurisdiction or maybe i do and i just don't know i know uh, as of uh even just one or two years ago it wasn't available but that would be great you know if you could use your mastercard your visa card or whatever and uh you know make a payment hundred dollars whatever it is and then uh, you know chip away from your bitcoin or from your xrp position or from uh, whatever other cryptocurrencies you may hold 
and pay with your actual cryptocurrency one day. Uh, I do think that that is already available in some uh, places around the world. I'm not entirely sure. Put it down in the comments too if you guys know for sure if you can do that in certain uh, in certain countries. I have a feeling uh, probably in countries like the United Arab Emirates where they are already very crypto forward. Nevertheless, guys, we're seeing this. Ripple partner Air Wallets continuing to build, continuing to uh, diversify uh, just based on their client needs, which is going to be really great for XRP demand in the coming years. Institutions are realizing that XRP is valuable enough to be purchasing more of it, guys. As we did see the dip yesterday, XRP ETPs have exploded with inflows. This one courtesy of XRP Crypto Wolf. There was a big change in the cryptocurrency investment landscape this week. Overall, investors became less optimistic, to put it mildly, resulting in a $528 million outflow from digital asset exchange traded projects or ETPs, sorry, products or ETPs. On the other hand, though, XRP focused investment products stood out as a notable exception, attracting 400,000 in new capital, according to Coin shares. This is another week in a row that uh, XRP has seen inflow showing that more and more investors are interested in the digital asset. Since the beginning of the year, XRP ETPs have attracted a total of $21 million in investment. So we are continuing to see uh, more investors investing in XRP. So institutions are seeing the value in it. You guys can see it here. XRP adding another 400,000. Whereas take a look at the outflows. Bitcoin uh, lost 400 million. Ethereum lost 146.3 million in Solana. The outflows are larger, 2.8 million. Whereas XRP investors were deciding, you know what, this is a pretty good price point. We are uh, now below that trend line. Whenever certain investors see these dips, they take the opportunity to buy up because they realize XRP is going to be one of those cryptocurrencies that obviously is uh, does have a use that obviously, uh, well, it does have a use case. It has been proven time and time again. And I'm starting to think that, uh, you know, the institutional investors that uh, may not have been so crypto savvy in the past, because uh, I'm not talking about the ones that understand the crypto industry. I'm talking about the ones that have historically, uh, you know, just traded within traditional markets. Even those guys are now realizing, oh, these cryptos have a utility. These cryptos have a purpose. It's not just I'm buying something randomly and I have no idea what it is. Now we're seeing, I think, more interest in XRP just based on, uh, you know, the based on, you know, the reasons that uh, we all got interested in. For me personally, it was 2017, 2018. Mostly 2018 is when I learned uh, a lot about XRP. I didn't know anything about it in 2017. I bought it anyway because of the craze, the hype. Yes, I did FOMO in because I did not know anything. Uh, I bought in at 74 cents back in, I think it was November or December of 2017. It went up to all-time high, $3.84, whatever that was. I did not sell. I should have sold. Yes, I should have sold. And uh, then I just kept down cost averaging throughout 2018. But I learned a lot throughout 2018. And I have a feeling that, uh, you know, many in the XRP community did the same thing. Uh, as me. And you know, the this, this same thing happens time and time again, just depending on when you get into the crypto space, whether it's the cycle of 2020, 2021, maybe your cost averaging down in 2022 and 2023. Here you are today. But we're learning, guys, every single day, new news is coming out like this one from Ripple partner Leanne Leanne. They are reversing the flow of payments into China. Check this out. They're also looking uh, into using stable coins. So that makes me wonder, are they going to be using the RLUSD? Leanne Leanne, their payments fintech company based in China, they created a business out of serving Chinese-based merchants who needed to collect money from overseas e-commerce and other digital economy counterparties. Uh, and that's still 90% of their business. But over the past two years, the company has begun to build out ways to transfer money in and out of China for a multitude of users. Now Lian Lian is launching a service for overseas companies to send money to China and to collect from there. Looking over the horizon, the company is exploring stable coins to facilitate more cross-border flows. This coming from Michelle Fung, general manager at Hong Kong. Reimagining cross-border flows. Fung oversees the international aspects of Lian Lian's strategy. She joined the company in 2021 with a background in global payments. She worked for uh, other companies here like Uniswap, an acquirer for China Union Pay. The company has uh, has found a successful niche in, in, Chinese, in China's e-money landscape, which is otherwise denominated by Tencent, which is another Ripple uh, connected company, WeChat Pay and Alipay, as well as card issuer China Union Pay. In 2023, it processed uh, about $2.2 trillion uh, in Ramibi, so the Chinese uh, fiat currency. That is about $308 billion of transactions for 3.2 million merchants, mostly ones based in China particularly. 
sleep. So Ripple Partner here, uh, looking to, uh, well, streamline their business, of course, making these overseas payments, these cross-border payments more effective. And notice here, guys, they are looking to explore or start using, start leveraging the use of stable coins in order for these types of transactions. Which brings me to this next point here, guys. I got to give full credit to Mr. Man. A great little video here. I will link it in the description if you guys want to watch the full thing. I'm going to play you guys a part of this. He says, this is how XRP becomes a stable coin according to the World Bank documentation. Now, if you guys don't remember back in uh, 2021, the World Bank Group, yes, the World Bank did come out with this particular document, Central Bank Digital Currencies for Cross-Border Payments, a review of current experiments and ideas. And if you go to page 39 of the 46 page document here, there's a section here, stable coins for cross-border payments. And down here, this is what they state. They also offer stability with respect to their parity against fiat currencies. Two digital currencies that fall into this category are RippleNet's native digital currency Ripple XRP and Stellar's native cryptocurrency, the Stellar Lumen. So they state here, and this got us, you know, scratching our head for quite a while. I'm still wondering about this. I think Mr. Man, though, has uh, maybe come to, uh, I don't know if it's a conclusion, but it certainly is a hypothesis of what they mean by this. RLUSD will act as a stabilizing mechanism for XRP, allowing it to operate in a stable manner, allowing it to become a different type of stable coin. So he's stating here the RLUSD will be the wholesale stable coin and XRP will be a different type of stable coin. Listen to this. What is up, everybody? I'm Mr. Man. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk to you guys about Ripple Stablecoin, uh, the RLUSD, and I will provide my theory into what it is, how it will be used, and I'll qualify my statements and my theory with evidence and what I consider proof as well. So I've heard people say that when the RLUSD, real stablecoin, Ripple stablecoin comes out, that they want to use it to move money. I don't think you will have that opportunity to do that. I don't think you and I will have the opportunity to tap into this stablecoin like you think you're going to be able to. I don't think this stablecoin is retail stablecoin. I think it's a wholesale stablecoin. Why? Because Ripple operates in the capacity where their customers are banks, financial institutions, central banks, faster payment systems, right? They don't operate in the world of you and, I, you and I. So for a wholesale stable coin, picture it like the JPM coin, JP Morgan's coin, which operates and performs intra-bank settlements or interbank settlements. So it's a mechanism that settles the bank's money movements internally. So for a stablecoin like the RLUSD, it'll operate like JPM stablecoin and it'll operate alongside XRP, giving XRP stability. So this will be XRP's stabilizing mechanism. The way you have stable coins like Circle and uh, um, like like Circle's um, offerings, USDC and US uh, EURC in Europe, Ripple will have options like that too. RLUSD might be RL Real, RL CNY, RL um Ra african rand rl rupee whatever they call it i don't know rl gvp rl euro whatever they want to call it that. doesn't know i don't know it doesn't really matter but they'll have it come in as that one coin rl usd go to xrp come back out as whatever that next rl is rl rand rl cny and end up at the bank the bank are the end customers financial institutions are the end customers not you and i so in this theory he's talking about the stable coin being supported by xrp but in turn that would create stability for xrp meaning that uh, at a point i'm guessing uh, once we have that drive for demand xrp will be at a high enough price to support the demand but also be at that stable high enough price to support the demand 
Mr. Man also brings up this working paper, okay? The BIS working paper, guys. Stable coins, the risk, potential, and regulation. And uh, here it says, if successful, stable coins could become a means to simplify and enable novel forms of exchange in the digital economy. For instance, smart contracts uh, could allow for the automation of certain transactions, such as only transferring the funds. Uh, for a house purchase, once an inspection report has been received, so giving an example there, the financial transfer is thus automated on the basis of certain objective con uh, conditions, which triggers payment. The digital payment would be linked to fiat currency and accounts via the stablecoin. So we're seeing a whole ecosystem now that is going to likely work on a stablecoin. I know Brad Garlinghouse in the past has said uh, it's kind of redundant to use a stablecoin considering XRP is very uh, proficient at uh, transferring fiat currencies. But I get the feeling that banks uh, were not smart enough to wrap their head around that concept. So uh, here comes Ripple now coming out with their stablecoin, the RLUSD. And this stablecoin could in fact be utilized within the uh, within the RippleNet ecosystem, especially amongst Ripple partners, similar to how JP uh, the JPM coin is used for intrabank settlement for uh, JP Morgan's customers. Mr. Man here also does uh, comment on JPM coin uh, and how its system is a permission blockchain system that functions as a payment rail and deposits uh, account ledger allowing uh, participating JP Morgan clients to transfer funds held on deposits with JP Morgan within the JPM coin system. Now, again, I will link this tweet which uh, contains this video in the description of my video here. It is 13 minutes long. I don't want to get into the full thing, but I do suggest you uh, you subscribe to Mr. Man's YouTube channel and also take a listen to this full video because he does bring up some other interesting points here. Now, how XRP is going to be stable, guys. Liquidity provision. The RLUSD could act as a stable trusted intermediary for XRP transactions within the banking system. Banks could use the RLUSD to facilitate XRP trades and settlement, providing a reliable source of liquidity. So it's going to be a mutual uh, beneficial relationship, the RLUSD and XRP. Collateralization. XRP could be partially collateralized by RLUSD, helping to stabilize its value. So they're mentioning it here, the value of XRP could be stabilized because it will partially be collateralized by the real USD Ripple stablecoin. This would be similar to how some stablecoins are backed by fiat currencies or other assets. Let's keep going on here uh, and talk a little bit about arbitrage opportunities, okay? Arbitrage opportunities. The existence of RLUSD could create arbitrage opportunities between XRP and the stablecoin, helping to keep XRP's price more stable. Traders could quickly move between XRP and the RLUSD to profit from price discrepancies, effectively smoothing out volatility. So there is a mechanism there also to help keep XRP price relatively stable. Institutional adoption. So this is going to be at the uh, at the high level there. As an intrabank stablecoin. So imagine if the RLUSD uh, becomes that intra, not so much bank, but intra RippleNet ecosystem uh, a coin that uh, everybody that's leveraging RippleNet uses. RLUSD could encourage more individual involvement with XRP, potentially leading to increased stability through larger, more consistent trading volumes. So if we have a kind of like a predictable ecosystem for XRP guys, and if we know that Ripple Partner A performs these types of transactions every Monday and Ripple Partner B performs these transactions every Tuesday and overall, you know, monthly we get Ripple Partner C, D, E, and F, they uh, perform all these transactions Ultimately, over time, if they are using the RLUSD, the reliability, the predictability, this could, in fact, provide more stability to XRP. Efficient settlements, RLUSD could enable faster, more efficient settlements of XRP transactions between banks, reducing counterparty risk and improving overall market stability. So if the overall market is fairly stable, which, you know, generally in uh, normal times, I mean, maybe not right this second because we have seen a crash in stock markets around the world. But overall, I mean, when we do see markets, when they are fairly predictable, when we can say, well, on average, we're seeing about X amount of money going through SWIFT every single day, whether that's, uh, I don't know, four or five quadrillion a year, divide that by 365. Uh, although I know SWIFT does not work 365, but I think you guys get my point there. Once we do see that predictable number, that would create stability in the ecosystem as a whole. But we do need everybody at scale before it gets there. Ultimately, though, that would in fact bring XRP to that high stable price but guys, that is going to take time. That means we have to get out of the spec market and into a real world setting. But anyway, wanted to thank Mr. Man for that great observation, a really interesting theory there. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. 
I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.